Okay, so today I want to talk about canine tr transmissible venereal tumor. It's commonly called TVT. So I first encountered this this past summer. I went on a trip with World Vets and we went to Ecuador and we went and did spay and neuter clinics. And so I was in the front part of the clinic helping out with the physical examinations and doing all the pre things towards the anesthesia. And so one of the check marks that we had to double check before we sent a dog back was whether or not they had TVT. And so it is a tumor, it presents as this external fleshy growth here, but if there's not a growth, it could just be bleeding. And what I was told to look for was that it's kind of cauliflower-like, um, and it's a tumor that's cancerous that is transferable between dogs. And it's almost always located on the genitalia, but it could be on other mucous membranes, maybe even like the nose or oral, but most of the time, uh, down here. And it's usually seen in young intact dogs, meaning they haven't been neutered in strays just because of how it is uh, transferred. And this is a dog that came into our clinic who had TVT and it was fairly obvious uh, once we saw this that she had it. And she also had another dog come in with her who was male who also had it. And so TVT is caused through direct physical contact between a dog that has TVT, and then that tumor is abraded onto the mucous membrane of another dog, whether it's oral, nasal, or genital. And so the most common way that this is done is through mating, but it could also happen through other activities like licking, biting, or sniffing. Uh, even simple playing, this could happen. And that's why that this is more common in subtropical countries that have uh, larger populations of strays who are bigger, um, bigger populations of uncontrolled strays, just because that they'll probably do these activities more than just dogs that you have in your house who may only have contact with dogs at a dog park. So the way that this is diagnosed, you can do one of two things. You could do a biopsy or a cytology. And personally, since we were just there doing things quick, we didn't do either of these before we diagnosed the dogs with TVT just because we wanted to start treatment. But in a more professional setting, you would do this. So a biopsy is when you take a piece of the tumor and then you examine it under the microscope looking at the cells. And you can also call that histopathology. Or you could do cytology where you take a sample of the cells. You could do that through uh, swabbing the area with one of those just cotton tip swabs you can buy, or by FNA, the fine needle aspiration, and then look at that under the microscope. So here's um, a picture of TVT. So these are the blood cells right here, and then TVT is pretty easily recognizable just because it's large and round, and it's these big uh, purple cells right here. So since it is a cancer, um, you may wonder how it progresses. Normally, it remains local um, at the site where it was first contracted. Um, if you leave it untreated, it's rare that it would spontaneously regress, but I guess it could happen. And also met metastasis, um, where it spreads to other regions, uh, is uncommon, only about 5% of cases. But if it did happen, it would probably go to regional lymph nodes. And normally not malignant, um, since it would just present as that uh, uncomfortable growth that bleeds. Um, but in 10% of patients, it would spread uh, malignantly in a cancerous fashion. Uh, and that happens more in dogs that have immunological compromise, so whether they're young or they have another uh, disease or something that's affecting their immune system, that would make them more susceptible to this. So for treatment, you can, there's a few options. The first one is just completely removing it through surgery. Uh, this one's not normally recommended just because depending on the location of the tumor and where it is, it would be hard to get all of it. And if you only do surgery alone, it has a greater chance of coming back. As in this one study that had 70 dogs, about 22% had reoccurrence within five months just doing surgery alone but you could couple surgery with doing chemotherapy. And then uh, radiation therapy and chemotherapy both have really good outlooks for treating TVT. Uh, we did chemotherapy at the clinic, so we used vincristine, and we started it 
um, right when they got there. And so this is how it's uh, administered through IV catheters or butterfly unit. And you can see that here. This is a dog that didn't have TVT, but um, right here, that little like orange uh, plastic thing poking out, you can see is the catheters that we placed. Um, and they use that also for the anesthesia and for the chemotherapy. Uh, and Vin Christine, you would administer probably, a, um, it would be once a week for three to six weeks. And then if Vin Christine isn't as effective as you want it to be, then they start on doxorubicin, which is also called adromycin. But both the chemotherapy and the radiation have really good outlooks for TVT. So to end on a happier note, this isn't the exact dog that I saw, but this is the same dog in the before and after photos. This dog had uh, two treatments of vincristine, and it went from looking like this to looking like this. And this was a dog, I believe, uh, that they just found like in a market, I want to say Hong Kong, that I found online. But uh, vincristine is really effective for treating TVT, so it doesn't have to be um, quite as painful as before. And then just a way of preventing TVT is really just uh, lowering that physical contact. If you know another dog has it, you don't want your dog to hang around that dog. Um, but that's just kind of the way that I guess. I would say once that you do the chemotherapy and it clears for that dog, you're probably okay for that dog to have contact with their dog since it clears the cancer cells out. Other questions, comments? Okay.